Welcome and Happy New Year to all who have gathered here today on this first Sunday in the church calendar year. And we pray that your Christmas indeed was a blessed one. And today we're going to ponder in our scriptures the dedication of the wise men and their desire to truly worship God and see what it means for us today. But first, let us turn to our life and ministry. Celebrations, we actually have two celebrations today. Celebration to uh, Alex Russell, who is 32 years old today, and we wish him happy birthday. And also to my hubby, Erwin Reese. And I wanna, we'll sing happy birthday to both of them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May God's richest blessings abide over you. And we pray that you have many, many more years of health and happiness. And also we are a church who lifts folks up in prayer. And we know that there are many in our midst today who are dealing with loss, dealing with challenges, grieving the loss of loved ones, the loss of health. Some are under doctor's care and some are dealing with a lot of change and worry over the lack of peace and harmony that's in this world. There's so much weariness, and yet we realize that the one born in a manger years ago became God in the flesh to help us journey through such times. And we as a church continue to pray for those and know that have the assurance that God hears our prayers. And just one other note, envelopes for 2024 are not available yet, so use the spare ones in your old uh, box until we get the new ones. And I think that's all of our announcements for today. So let us join together now as we sing our introit. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship, and the words are printed in our order of service. Like the wise ones of old, we gather here as a community of seekers looking, looking for, for the life. light. We come searching for the light that will give us clarity and purpose for 2024 to guide, to guide our, our way and journey, journey with, with us. us. Looking for God to refresh our perception so we may discover God's, God's manifestation, manifestation in the, in the coming, coming of Christ. Christ. Hoping to catch a glimpse of this truth revealed in the, in the life, life and love of Jesus Christ. Christ. May our faith not only be just a word, may the light, the light of, of this candle, candle remind, remind us that, that the, the light of Christ continually guides every day and, and in 2024 and beyond. beyond. And now let us pray together our opening prayer. Guiding God, once again in your goodness, we have been gifted with a new year and all the opportunity it holds. We come to worship, bringing our hopes and our fears and our longings to you who has gifted us with life itself. May our time of worship, O oh God, prepare us for the life you have called us to live 
Teach us to be wise and to risk sharing your unique vision for the world. Amen. Let us join now in singing. The first Noel the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. Was to search him for shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay a keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. No well, no well.
And friends, as I have said many times, we seek to praise God in one accord, but we know that from time to time, we're in our mere humanity, we're going to fall short, and we need to come to God and seek God's, God's uh, forgiveness and also seeking courage and renewal. Let us pray together our prayer. Loving God, all praise to you for calling us to worship and to a life of faith. Your mercy and forgiveness help us put our past sins behind us and start anew. You are the God of creation who knows us through and through. Give us pardon and peace this day. Let's take a moment in silent prayer. And continuing together, fill us with your love so we may see the world through Christ's eyes. Amen. And now there's always an assurance of pardon. Receive God's mighty gift of grace and live joyfully to God's pleasure in the coming year. All, All thanks, thanks to, to our, our God, God for the, for the gift, gift of, of grace. grace. Hi, boys and girls. How are you today? I'm here having a wonderful time looking at my nativities. And today is Epiphany Sunday. And Epiphany Sunday is a time where we think about how three wise men came to worship the baby Jesus. And you know what? In each of the nativities, here's a gift that I was given many years ago. And look at this one. You see the three wise men on their camels? Here they are, three of them, and they have gifts in their hands, and they came to worship the baby Jesus. And they were led by a stark. And I have another nativity here, and this one was given to me as a gift. Look at this one, it lights up too, look. And we have the wise men here. One with a gift, two with a gift, and three with a gift. And there's Mary and Joseph there. Isn't that beautiful? The three wise men. And they were led by a star. A star that promised that the one coming would be the king of the Jews. Hold on. I have one other nativity here I want to show you. Let me turn this one on the side, and this one is my favorite one. I'm going to move the camera in so that you can see it. Here it is, and here we have the three wise men with their gifts. And you know, they were led by a light, a light and a star in the sky, and there they when they worshipped the baby Jesus, they had their little hearts changed and they went away becoming such different people because they had seen the love of God in the manger, in this little tiny Christ child, this little one here. And you know what? We can be light. We can be the light of Christ for others as well. We can shine that light to others by being kind, by being loving, and by being caring. And I guess that's what this nativity is all about. It's a symbol of God's love, how God came to us, and people recognize that love that they had to come and worship him. There's the three wise men, but we also have a shepherd over here too, as one of the shepherds who came to to worship the baby Jesus. So Christmas is all about love. And love is something that you and I can share. It don't cost anything. It's just giving of ourselves and loving and being kind. And we thank God for coming into this world. Let us pray. 
Loving God, thank you for coming as a baby to show us how to love one another. Amen. And Happy New Year, because we've started another year where we can be loving and kind. Bye. At this time, I would like to invite our readers to come and share our sacred scriptures today. But before I do, let's seek God's blessing upon our hearing. Loving God, we gather in our quiet spaces, hoping to hear a word from you that will renew our hearts for the coming year. And as we share in the scriptures this day, open our minds, open our hearts, open our spirits, so that we may live according to your will, guide our hearing and our understanding, and bless us this day. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, reading from chapter 3, reading verses 1 to 12 reading from the newly revised Standard Version. Paul's Ministry to the Gentiles This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan for the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of God for us today. Thanks be to God. Our responsive reading comes from Psalm 8, found on page 732. O God, our God, how glorious is your name in all the earth! From the lips of infants and children your praises reach up to the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your foes to quell the enemy and avenger. O God, our God, How glorious is your name in all the earth. When I look to the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their places, what are we mortals that you should be mindful of us, mere human beings that you should care for us? O God, our God, how glorious is your name in all the earth. You have made us little less than divine, and crowned us with glory and honor. You have made us rulers over all your creation and put all things under our feet, all sheep and cattle, all creatures of the wild, the birds of the air and the fish in the sea and all that make their way through the waters. O God, our God, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Gospel reading today comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 12, reading from the Newly Revised Standard Version, The Visit of the Magi. 
In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it was it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. May God bless to our hearts the hearing of our sacred scriptures today. Thank you to our readers for sharing the scriptures to us this day. Let us now seek God's blessing before we meditate. Gracious God, as we come to meditate upon your word at the beginning of this new year, open our hearts and our minds and lead us to your presence where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our meditation today is focused upon Matthew's Gospel, the visit of the Magi. And what a familiar passage that is, as we hear about the encounter with Herod. And it's quite well known, an encounter where Herod commanded them to return to him after they found Jesus so that he could also worship Jesus. <laughs> and they left Herod, and they found Jesus, where then they were instructed in a dream not to return to Herod, but to go home another way. And you know, like every other human, they faced an opportunity to heed their warning in a dream, to heed Herod's call, or to ignore their dream or their message from God. And yet they listened and they returned to their country without speaking to Herod, who had other plans for the Christ child. I've always loved the sincerity, you know, and the honesty of little children while reading. <laughs> so while reading and studying the commentaries this past week, I came across this story of a teacher in Great Britain where she asked some kindergarten children about the Christmas story and about the visit of the Magi. And children always have such wonderful insights. And one little boy that was asked said, hmm, the three wise men bought Jesus some gold stuff. He said, but I think Legos would have been much better. <laughs> well, I thought, you know what? In the world in which we live, it's not only children who miss the important gift that came to us at Christmas or the important gift of the Magi's visits. There's, and there's, there's been a few ideas over the years that have been passed along as truth, which in fact, the Bible does not substantiate. And we were taught to believe there were three wise men. Well, the Bible doesn't indicate that there were three wise men, men only that there were three gifts. And it doesn't say how, ma how many Magi there were. There could have been any number. And we often see three wise men visiting the baby Jesus in a manger scene. 
Just as we heard in verse 11, though, that the Magi came into the house. And when we translate that from Greek, okios, that means a house and not a stable or a manger. So it wasn't a manger that the Magi visited. In fact, it was some time after the birth of Jesus, and Jesus was not a newborn baby when the Magi came to him. And if we had read on past verse 12 and went to verse 16 today, we would have tell how Herod was not interested in worshiping, worshiping the Christ child as he had indicated to the Magi. But instead, he had killed, had ordered to kill all the children two years and younger, hoping also to put an end to the threat of this child born as a king. But you know, all of these nitty gritty details, despite all of that revealed in our hearing today, it's not those nitty gritty details about Jesus's birth that's really important. It's how the Magi were dedicated to searching and dedicated to be on a journey in search of Christ. And to me, that's what speaks volumes to me today. There were also folks in Jesus' time who never knew of his birth like us. Folks like the shepherds, because when the angel appeared, they were terrified. They said they were so afraid. But they worshipped after and went away praising and sharing the good news. And there were others like Herod who felt the threat of their own power and had their own agendas, yet did not want to worship the child. And yet there were the Magi who were one night gazing out into the night sky and they witnessed the brightest star that they had ever seen. And they were convinced it was the announcement of the birth of the king that they had been waiting for. And they set off on a journey, specific journey to find him. And so the passage highlights the difference between those who really sought to worship Jesus and those who did not. And that's still, it's still today the same in our world. You know, Christmas is typically the biggest season in Christian celebration next to Easter. And it's important to understand that even those who go to church don't always really worship Jesus. We see at least three distinct responses to people who hear about the birth of Jesus. And people today seem to be responding still the same way. As we look at these responses today, we can find maybe a little of ourselves in each of the responses. Think about the first response of Herod in verse four. When he heard that the Magi had been born, he gathered together the Jewish religious leaders and asked them where the Messiah was and where he was to be born. And they knew the answer. Verse five said, in Bethlehem of Judea, that, that's what was written by the prophets, and that was in Micah, prophesied many years before. As it said, Micah 5, 2, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means the least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And you know what? I have no doubt that these religious leaders knew of this prophecy. They could recite it off the top of their heads. They didn't have to look it up. They knew about the coming of the Messiah. His history tells us, historians tell us, that many of the Pharisees could recite the entire Old Testament themselves. They knew the right answer. The Christ child was to be born in Bethlehem. But just because they knew it doesn't mean that they responded rightly to the birth of Christ. Think about this. Do you see in any verse of scriptures where it says anything about the Jewish leaders going to Bethlehem to worship? There's nothing about it. These men knew the right answers from, the, from biblical teachings, and I'm sure the word got around that the Messiah was born after the shepherds left, and maybe they were able to give the right answer of where he was to be born but they didn't go. 
they didn't do anything about it because there's no record that they even rejoiced or visited him or worshiped him in any way. In fact, some of these same men were probably ones who 30 years later would become jealous of Jesus, reject him and have him put to death. So what about us? Who are we? We've heard the most of the right answers throughout the years, almost all of our lives. Are we on a journey seeking God and striving to follow light in the new year that we are about to begin? And then we look at Herod's response to the news of the birth. He sent the Magi to Bethlehem, told him to go and search carefully for the child, come back and let me know so that I can worship him. It sounded right to maybe the uh, wise men at first, but we knew that those words from Herod were only from the teeth out. He had no intentions of worshiping the Christ child. He had something much more sinister in his mind. He was talking to talk, but he had no desire to walk the walk. And how does that relate to us today? Do we sometimes, we know we're not wicked like Herod, but do we sometimes have our own personal agendas that become actually way more important than really worshiping God? And then there's the worshipful response of the Magi in verse, tell, verse 10 tells us, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. Just imagine. And in Greek, that, li that literally means mega joy, big joy. This was no religious ritual for them that I'm going to go to church or because I have to or it wasn't a formal religion that they were doing. This was real worship from their hearts. They were rejoicing because the star meant that the one who was promised to come as a Messiah was there. And you know what? That's what real worship is. It's not a matter of just doing the right things or attending worship. You know, it took me a few years to realize what genuine worship is. When you truly love God, worshiping him is not something you have to do. It's not something you want to do. It's not a duty. It's, it's a calling of the heart, a calling to humbly serve and all others, things that we may wish to do is secondary. Real worship involves humbling ourselves before God. And finally, in verse 11, we hear how, and this is a familiar part, how they opened their hearts and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These were very, very extravagant gifts to give to a child. And again, this reflects their, their genuine joy in worship. They gave these gifts because to the Christ child. This is what our giving of Christmas gifts is supposed to be about because it reminds us that giving is a part of worship. When you really love and when you really de delight in someone or something, you want to generously give from the heart to them, not out of duty. For our offering and our giving is a spiritual indicator of the temperature of our hearts for God. One commentary related in these terms and says, Christianity is not about money, as many churches and ministers are accused of. But the truth is that money is often like a thermometer. It's a great tool to show our spiritual temperature. And finally, when God told the Magi to go home by another way, they didn't ignore it. They obeyed God. They listened to God, and they did it. Of course, they knew it was important that they did do it, and it was important that the life of the Christ child would not be endangered. And it's always important for us to listen to those quiet stirrings within our heart when God speaks to us and gives us those quiet nudgings, because it's one of the most important signs of real worship as well. Friends, I know that there's been much misunderstanding and much we don't know about the Magi. But those unknown details about who they were and what they did and the dates and times of what happened, they're not as important.
but as how those magi actually had a heartfelt response, a worshipful response to Jesus. We see it in their rejoicing and in their praising, in their humility, in their generous giving, and in their obedience to God, because they really came to worship Christ. The Magi's role in the story of the Nativity is kind of like our own journey into 2024. We're born in this life with a free will and the ability to choose whether we will follow Christ or whether we won't follow Christ and worship. And this passage gives us an opportunity at the beginning of a new year to take a step back and reflect on what we can do in 2024 to grow, cl to grow closer to God in the new year. And one day, I pray that we can feel the pure joy which the Magi felt when they encountered and worshiped Christ. And to that I say, Amen. Friends, like the shepherds who worshiped the, the Christ child, and like the Magi who worshiped the Christ child, they went away sharing the light of Christ. And we're called to do that and be the light of the world. And that's the, fo the theme of our next hymn. I am the light of the world. You people come and follow me. If you follow in love, you'll learn the mystery of what you were meant to do and be. Let us sing that together with Yvonne.
let us prepare our hearts for prayer as we sing. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you who set the stars in the heaven, we come in prayer seeking the way for us to go forward into this new year and seeking the way to you, to worship you. Help us to follow the light that you have placed within our hearts. Give us courage to go on each day despite our complacency, despite the uncertainties, despite the doubts and the fears that we may experience from time to time. In times of ease, when travel is easier, help us not to forget your purpose for our lives. In times of darkness, give us the courage and the commitment, the commitment of the Magi whose hearts were focused upon worshiping you despite all challenges. When our thoughts cause us to question, build us up in our resolve to follow your path. Bring us ever closer to your glorious and radiant Son, and with a great and everlasting love, help us to worship him in joy, in hope, and in peace. And create in us, O oh God, a humble and obedient heart that rejoices in daily giving and worshiping you with our very lives. And when we truly worship you with our hearts, call us to reach out in prayer for the light of your love to be present to all who journey in darkness. We know that there are folks who are going through rough places due to health concerns, due to loss of loved ones, or whatever their challenge may be. We pray for them. We lift them unto you, knowing that you, O oh God, hear the, the murmurs and the whispers of every heart. We ask, them to give, we ask you to give them your peace and assure them that they do not journey alone. Lord, we pray for each person bowed in your presence this day that indeed you would help them to be humble and obedient as they journey into 2024. Hear the prayers of our hearts this day as we lift them unto your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our, our Father, Father, who Lord, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Amen. us this day Stay our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, in our meditation, we just spoke of how genuine worship is the sign of a generous heart and how we are to share the light of Christ to all 
who are in need so that others, all others may feel as equal and worthy of Christ's love. And we do that in United Church in the most beautiful way through our mission and service. So let us now take a moment to listen to or see our minute for mission, and then we'll share together our offertory music. First and foremost at Oak Table, we offer a community of compassion and hope for our guests. The one thing that we want to do is give people respite from whatever troubles, whatever problems they have outside of here. And on top of that, we provide a very nutritious lunch for people. We want to make sure that their stomachs are full when they leave here and that they have someone to listen to them. For me, I love that it's not just about the food. Um, and it's not just about people being really hungry or having nowhere else to go, being homeless. There's all kinds of different people who come here and they come here for, um, for just for camaraderie. Um, people who volunteer here and work here know people's names when they come in the door. Um, we have uh, activities for people to do and uh, resources if they need it. Steve and I realized, okay, maybe people on the street, they're just we're just all people, right? Everyone's so friendly here. I've really gotten to know people and it's opened my eyes a lot too. I mean, even things like mental illness, there's so many people that need help and just don't have access to the services they need. So it's really opened my eyes to a lot of, I guess, social issues here in Winnipeg as well. I think it's important for everybody to give back if they can. Um, when they're in a position that they can, then why not? And believe me, I get more out of this than I give. And so they need somewhere that they can go and visit with their friends and see their friends and talk to people and make new friends. And so this is that place for them. The support of the Mission and Service Fund is pivotal to Oak Table's survival and success. We couldn't do it without knowing that we have that amount of block funding available to us. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Let us now offer a prayer over the gifts. Let us pray. God of wisdom and hope, we come bringing gifts because you first gave and held nothing back of yourself. Rather, you came among us in Christ Jesus to make us new. We offer to you now our lives and with them the work of our hands as represented by these gifts we bring before you. Bless us 
and what we offer, so all may bring light to this world. Amen. And now let us join in our closing hymn as we sing a very familiar old hymn. As with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold, as with joy they hailed its light, leading onward beaming bright, so most gracious Lord may we evermore your splendor see. Let us sing that together as our closing hymn. And before I share our commissioning and benediction, I want to thank, of course, the readers who read for us today, our technical support crew, Betty and Irwin, and our organist and guitar player, musician, Yvonne Milley. And thank you for joining with us on this first Sunday in the new year. Let us join now together in our commissioning, and the words are printed in your order of service. Go from this place today, knowing you are wrapped and held securely in the love of the Creator, the peace of Christ, and the inspirational joy of the Spirit. And as you go into the world, may the Holy Spirit go with you. May God use you to lead others into the way of light. And may God smile upon you as you go. God bless you. And again, Happy New Year until we meet again.